to go. The officials, Frank Murphy is our referee, Andy Brace, Chris Busby, and Ben Whitehouse, the television match official. We are off and running at the Aviva Stadium. A place against the Stormers in the URC final is what's at stake. And Keith Earls grabs a hold of that ball for Munster. And Craig Casey will fire it out. Healy and Munster looking to play from inside their 22. You feel, John Barkley, that Munster have to be the ones that settle into this game. They don't want to chase Leinster. No, you're absolutely right, Ralph. They've got to be aggressive. They've got to actually it? impose themselves. We know through the course of many seasons especially outside, the Eastern, if you just outside. sit back and let Leinster play they've got far too much in the tank outside lines this boot Craig Casey will dig it out of course no Conor Murray today he's one of four Munster players who are going through the HIA protocols return to play protocols Leinster get a hold of it Luke McGrath and it's taken on by Max Deegan there for McGrath again as the fireworks still create a little bit of smoke around the stadium and it's been a misty old foggy old day in Dublin for long parts and that hasn't helped the situation is real concern for one of the Leinster players down there and you know it's real concern when you see yeah. the opposition Will Connors is it who's taken a bang yeah it's Will Connors He's been plagued by injury, hasn't he, this season? Yeah, yeah they will, of course. Well, will Connors, okay for people well. that don't realise, Will Connors was Josh van der Fleer before Josh van der Fleer was <laughs> Josh van der Fleer, <laughs> if you get my meaning. I mean, he was the blue-eyed boy, and he, well, that one, he's just, well, it's really distressing even to watch, and Will Connors just takes it. Very heavy yeah. blow, and it looks, it looks like a penalty to me, then I, think I, don't, I don't. I don't know. It's, it's the arm of the monster player. I actually think his head hits off the ground. Whether we might see a penalty for the, the head contact for the arm, but well, more concerning is is the condition of Will Connors right now. He's been plagued by injury, as you say, Stephen. Will get a view on the validity of all that in just a minute, but. Hat full of Irish caps and then just yeah, injury I mean, after injury, I mean, knee, course, arm, bicep, hamstring. Yeah, okay. yeah nine hamstring caps for really. Ireland. Luke. As you rightly say, he was the, uh, the new kid on the block, known for his chop tackle and an his prowess over the ball. We do have high tackle, okay? That's an injury from what we can see, and I'm not a doctor, but what I can see is when he hits the ground, the high tackle is a penalty. That's when you're kind of the least there. We get this guy sorted and we start with a penalty to Leinster. So to stay your team still, that'll be the mark. So yeah, the decision of Frank Murphy is that it's a high tackle. The injury to Will Connor seems to be on his contact with the ground rather than from anything other than and it didn't look like a particularly was badly timed rather than a, even a swinging arm. And Frank Murphy explained to the two captains what the decision is and Connors, well, obviously will not take any further part and there's the man who will replace him, Josh van der Fleer. It's unsettling when you've got all that adrenaline pumping through your veins either side, John, to, to take a knock like this and a stop and everybody's got to reset. It happens. It, it does happen and the players are, you know, unfortunately are, are accustomed to these sorts of breaks, but just from the game, Munster started trying to play the ball from D. Both teams playing at great tempo. You can even see in the opening yeah, minute and three seconds, there's an intensity to the way the game's playing that befits not only you know a semi-final of the URC, but also a pretty big derby mentality. So, yeah, the players now. You've seen that we've seen the Leinster players off camera getting together, getting back together. They're almost just itching to get going though, aren't you, Steve? There's not much to be said now. You, you, you've spoken before game, you've spoken pre-game, you've spoken before you came out, you probably spoke before kickoff. Now, you just want to get on an itch, but you also know that they will not rush any of these moments to get Will Connors off the pitch, and they're doing their absolute best to make sure he, he gets off in the best condition he can. Well, it's taken the sting right out of everybody in the Aviva Stadium right now. And our thoughts, obviously, and concerns are with Will Connor, surrounded by medical staff. It 
was for a play, and, and a big catch in the face. I didn't say more than a penalty, because it was just a passive arm at that, but it was, we ended up getting caught and turned into the ground. Is that, that, that's the way I read it. We did look at it on screen. He's just had rotten luck, Will Connors, and we wish him nothing but good luck in what we hope will be a speedy recovery. That's a pretty shocking incident in the opening 60 seconds. Penalty only, the tackle was passive. After all that, we will resume with a penalty for the high tackle. And it'll be Harry Byrne will get the, the first opportunity to have a kick at goal. Worth reiterating again for those of you joining late, the reason it was a penalty was because it was a high tackle. The action of, of whatever happened to Will Connors was in the way he fell to ground and caught his head on the turf. And that's why there was no yellow or red card for anything. So we resume. Penalty. Harry Byrne, first opportunity. He's gone OK with the boot this season. 75% success in his efforts across the regular season of the URC. First opportunity on this Saturday evening in Dublin town. And the home fans are happy. He hits the target. And lifts are blue. Our first on the scoreboard, they lead it by three points to nil. That's a great kick from Harry Byrne. If there's a settler that you would maybe want to be from 35 yards out, directly in front of the sticks. But I tell you what, if they get his mentality right after that long break, he could easily just waltz up there and push that wide, and it just shows the level of concentration the young man has. A restart from... Scotland international then Healy and fires it off to Conan McGrath as Leinster trying to organise their exit. Remember this is the third meeting of these sides this season. Leinster of course winning the other two. First one back in October right here by 27 points to 13 and then at Christmas it was a lot closer. Just a single point in Leinster's favour down in Thoman Park 20 points to 19. Here's Casey and Crowley at 12. Of course, having Crowley at 12 gives Munster that option to have two playmakers that can come in and out in that first receiver position. There's Ty Byrne, takes it on, and after it goes the red scrum cap of Josh van der Fleer. He's been on the pitch, what, 35, well, maybe a minute and a half, and he's had his impact, John. Yeah, immediate impact from Josh van der Fleer. We had a great viewpoint of it and what I love about this he's not flying in, he lets the play evolve and he just makes a great decision technically very good Leinster interestingly don't compete a huge amount at the breakdown compared to others in the URC, they choose to fill the pitch, bring line speed let the opposition have the ball but when you've got players like him who can make brilliant decisions it makes you fully loaded defensive line and it's the consistency, Stephen. Uh, like, you start to take that sort of behaviour for Van der Fleer for granted week in, week out. Well, that's what happens when you're World Rugby Player of the Year, isn't it? Charlie Natai in midfield alongside Robbie Henshaw for Leinster. Here's McGrath and Byrne, and Leinster are starting to hit their straps, aren't they? That's out. Tommy O'Brien out on the wing, taken on by Jason Jenkins, who, of course, had a season with Munster, a little bit injury ravaged season, uh, Jason Jenkins, the South African, made 10 appearances for Munster, just two starts, here he is again, Al Alatoa on his shoulder, O'Brien out wide, that's Tommy O'Brien hit by Dermot Barron, and now it's Munster's turn to go to work at the breakdown, and they get the turnover, and that will lighten the mood of those in red in the stands. Oh, it's brilliant from Munster, isn't it? This is what you want early in the game. Getting up, being physical, dominating the contact. Dermot Barron getting over the ball. He went off early last week against Glasgow, but he is up for it. We just hear the crowd now, Ral, edging this Munster team forward. 
And the cross lengths are two metres, Luke. On the cut, please, Ryan. Munster come into this, people have got to remember, in a rich ish vein of form. They've only lost one of their last nine in the URC. And when you think of where they were at the beginning of the league, I mean, they really started this championship like a tractor on a cold winter morning. They were coughing and spluttering. They won two of their first seven. And here they are, not quite a Rolls Royce, but they've definitely upgraded. Yeah, it's been a significant upgrade from the team we saw, the tractor we saw in the first few rounds, and they've timed it well. They had a few good wins in South Africa, and they look right up for this one. Here's Fresh in midfield, and around the corner comes Shane Daly, and then Healy gets a hold of it, and then Fresh again, and Casey, and it's all done at pace, and Leinster watch, and Harry Byrne intercepts, but we're going to come back for a penalty in midfield against Leinster. I think it's in the far side, side entry, just the inside entry. We'll see it again. Brilliant take yeah, by John Klein. A really good setup. Edge and forward, edge and forward. And then we'll just see. I think it's Kelleher. Oh, yeah, just in at the side. Here it is. Paints a pretty poor picture for the referee there, John. Yeah, couldn't resist it. Mark's here, guys. It's brilliant to see that both teams are really fizzing this ball around. Munster probably a bit more confrontational on the game line and look, he's going to go to the corner and carry on that confront. I, lo I love this because we spoke about it pre-game. They're going to have to score tries. Three, three points, six points is not going to be enough on a dry day in the Aviva against the Leinster team this good. So I, I love seeing this. Put it in the corner. Vacuum Maul, which has been very good through the season. Decent kick. Gives them about, what, seven, maybe eight metres to go to the Leinster line. I, I'm not going to like and Baron and the Munster line out and you have a sense of what's coming the question is if you're Leinster can you defend against it it is the mole it is what we expected and Baron burrows in at the back and Munster go to work although Leinster have done a good job of stopping them in their tracks and immediately Casey feels the back line is where he needs to go Crowley the first receiver and they keep it tight this time tight burn around the corner he punches a hole Casey quick again hotness that looked like a head collision in there one of the Leinster players was it Robbie Henshaw will come back to that in a minute because Munster keep purring towards that line Lockman though stopped in his tracks Leinster go to work McGrath sees loads of room out wide and kicks downfield Munster forced all the way back and Shane Daly gathers just inside his own half and they've got to go to work again. No! Big moment that with Munster threatening Wait. Leinster repel to the sky. Munster go Jimmy O'Brien. Seventh start at fullback this season. Showed all the skills together. That one under a bit of pressure. McGrath. Natai, Wait. big right boot of his, didn't quite catch it in, in ways that threw Mike Haley because he was expecting it to come a little further and it didn't, but he has time to gather and he brings it back to the halfway line. Casey, narrower of the two sides, Munster really mixing it up and keeping that Leinster defensive line guessing. This is where Munster the best in the league, scored the most tries in the league from kick returns, you can see why they want to hold the ball. Leinster looking pretty organised though and up to it. Almost through is Healy, half a break. Were Leinster off their feet? So I think they were yeah, not they supporting their body weight. Definitely, Ralph. Jack Conan, the Jack culprit Cody there, getting over the ball. But Ben Healy, how flat is he playing? He's right on the line. A little show and go. And then he gets the... Shot called. Yeah, they're going for the shot this time. On his hands. But I'll tell you what, on the line, I think it was Josh van der Fleer that made the decision to come in and make a, a huge hit on Lockman, turned the ball over, and I thought they were going to keep it through the hands. That's a lovely show and go there. I, I actually saw it. Yeah, he kind of his chest on head. And you see it there, Conan's hands just touch the ground, don't they, just for that second, just to balance himself up. But you're right, Ben Healy's playing so flat to the line, he looks really confident. I was really impressed with him in his appearance for Scotland against Italy. Didn't get a huge amount of game time, but looked comfortable, looked confident. He looks comfortable and confident tonight, and conversely, just watching the way Munster playing, Harry Burns sitting that little bit deeper, 
realizing that Munster are bringing a bit more of an aggressive line speed, happy to drop the ball off, take some of the sting out of this Munster attack. They're coming hard at the moment. Ben Healy then. 19 out of 23 in the URC this year. That all adds up to 83% success. Shot clock runs down. He gets the kick away, and it's accurate. Good way out. Further out than the first kick of Harry Byrne. Same result. Success. The Reds are on the board. It's three points apiece. It's a super nudge. Seems like their monster are playing against a little bit of a wind. I know his trajectory is a little bit lower, but what a start to the game. How physical, unbelievable. Oh, that's really good work. Cannot tell you how good that is from Ryan Baird. To slap it back on the Leinster side when it looked lost to Munster. And here comes Max Deegan. Burst onto the scene with a couple of international caps a few years ago. And and then had his injury troubles and once you fall out of back row contention in Leinster or indeed Ireland at the moment it's a long way back there are lots of numbers there ahead of you but no doubting his abilities here's Milne and Al Alatoa is there Robbie Henshaw and Deegan once more that's a great tackle from Keith Earls talk about setting the example the man on the wing for Munster 98 international caps. No, that was all back. Sets the tone. Leinster continue to carry the ball. Byrne, O'Brien. Just below the shoulder. Dave Carney, referee, clear that he was hitting below the shoulder. Ryan Baird. tackle off the ball. Uh, there's a little word with Frank Murphy to say, do you see I was tackled? And Frank says, I do, and now someone's going to get a lecture. OK. Guy. They're an advantage. You've then played a nine from an offside. No, I didn't. Be very careful. I'll be watching from my way. It's cynical there from Tyg Vern. He knows the penalty's coming, but he doesn't want that advantage to continue. Ball. He jumps over the rock. Frank Murphy, cute to that one. We're seeing lots of high tackles, but when I say high, trying to target the ball because we know how good both sides are with offloading it and the runners coming onto it. But what a hit, it was actually Keith Earls come up to close face. the gate and then he make the defensive read to go in and smash his opposite man. But what a brilliant hit. Ronan Kelleher, first Leinster appearance since last January, can you believe it? Back from a shoulder injury, perfect timing for the three weeks that are in it. Well, two definitely, the they'll think three. McGrath, Natai. Round the corner, Leinster come, we've seen it so often and so often it creates and Carney comes back inside and Munster chasing Dave Carney's shadow. Stay. He's onside. Jenkins. Stop cold by a strong Munster defensive effort. Al Alatoa also shut down. Lockman, the one to make that tackle, but oh. on they come. Again, Earls throws himself, no. this time at Tommy O'Brien and less success. Jimmy O'Brien is shut down by Haley. Thank you, Jack, away, please. And that was some statement from Munster's defence. Not sure you can do it for 80 minutes, but it was a heck of a three minutes. Yeah, it was a hell of a three minutes, and That's Keith there was a huge part of a lot that's good, even first phase there. You see him there working hard to make sure Lenser don't get on the edge. Peace. He gets back in, double effort, gets back on his feet. Peter. Competes for the ball, the ball comes back down his side and he comes yeah, in for a big it's monster hit, another hit. And it's not a trend or anything. But one He's really back, setting the stall for how this team are defending. I tried to kill a fan. But it was made public, wasn't it, that Keith Earls was maybe playing his last game for, or maybe not going to get a, a last game for, for Munster I'll do the same for you. before the end of the season, <laughs> obviously a World Cup maybe on the horizon for Keith Earls, but just where he is. This opening 13 minutes of the match, you can see what it means for Keith Earls to play for Munster, it means absolutely everything. This is a new one on me. 
even in the professional era, there are some fellas, whether they're playing for Edinburgh or Glasgow or whether they're playing for Leicester or Ulster or Munster or Leinster, they, they are the heartbeat of, of their club, even in the in the professional era where where players come and go. And Keith Earls is one of those guys who's just everything about his club is in his DNA. And, and you can see it, right? You can see it through his actions. I, I think he's, for me, I, I grew up playing against him and he's probably the last of that generation of that, that monster okay. great size of the Paul O'Connells, the Dr. Callans, these guys, and he was a young man there, but the fact he's still there, still putting his body in, the, in harm's way. Nicely done from Munster from their defensive line out and Gavin Coombs trucks it up. Now, Lee, player of the match last the week in the victory Music, over Glasgow. Please. And he's been, well, probably oh, player of the, the season for Munster. Carney watches that one all the way into touch. That's an excellent exit. The dummy jump from O'Mahony. Then Byrne goes up and then the carry Munster from the Coombs line. just to get that right extra two line. or three yards to make the kick for Casey a little bit easier and really interesting to see Munster get it off the pitch. That one didn't look straight. And and that's, that's why. There you go. It's interesting just on Craig Casey. We saw Caelan Blade playing for Connick a little earlier and Connor Murray and Jameson Gibson Park are obviously there as well. And you look at Andy Farrell and, and there's so few opportunities now left between World Cup squads being announced. Casey will know this is a big occasion. He's got his opportunity and he'll want to put on a big show and cement his place in that Irish squad for the World Cup. All right, let's go. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't see him last time. He's the type of player, John, isn't he? That you would just hate to play against because he's always at your heels, always chirping away. He's sprinting past people going down the tunnel at half time. He's Four just. Eight, uh, eight. I think it's called annoying. He's a handful <laughs> of fitness, I think, maybe. Bind! Set! May well be the first scrum of the evening, 15 and a half minutes in. Here's Ben Healy, Munster comfortable in that scrum. Both scrums have operated efficiently throughout the season. Stay now. Taken on by Jeremy Lockman. Uh, now Healy has a Stop, little hey, sight hey. that Tommy O'Brien was up in a defensive line. Thought he could find some grass out there, but Jimmy O'Brien did really hey. well to hey. cover hey. across. Don't. Stay there. 14 URC semi-finals for Leinster over the years. They've won 12. Munster, by comparison, lost the last five that they've been in. This one, three points apiece after 16 minutes in there. Well, that makes it sound like maybe there hasn't been much in it, but there's been loads in it. Ball is lifted, no offside. No offside, says the referee, is Jack Conan. Drops the shoulder and takes the contacts. Burn playing a little flatter now. Robbie Henshaw, O'Brien to O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien looks to go around Casey and does so. He's put to ground, but Leinster no, in behind Munster. Where to from here? Good line speed from Munster just to shut Leinster's opportunity off out wide, initially at least. McGrath again, really quick work from him. Harry Byrne isolated, two or three Munster players there, and they've turned it over. Byrne just got away from his supporting runners, and Munster seized the opportunity. That's Peter O'Mahony at the breakdown. And what a kick as well, finding grass. There's going to be some space out here now. Entire bodies, big passage of play. Outside. Wait, Munster. Hold on. Jimmy O'Brien, he's got a big boot on him, and that's well managed by Shane Daly. Good return kick. Your serve, Tommy O'Brien. <laughs> Brought back in. Any moment now, game of rugby will break out. McGrath. 
Stop 14. I think we'll call that a score draw, will we? Yeah, both teams conscious of making a mistake and sort of feeling each other out there in that kick battle. Sort of back where we started, aren't we? But I just I can't, can't get over how good this retreating monster defence are. That scramble, the work rate off the ball. It's just absolutely it's relentless. Yeah, and that, that, that was the template last week in Glasgow. Well, Take pressure on pressure on pressure, and then work at the breakdown to turn it over and release that pressure, put it back on your opposition. It's been an amazing start to this game. Absolutely incredible. Baron, Byrne, Casey, Healy, and to the air we go. Tommy O'Brien is going to come forward and... It looked like he was not committed, but boy, did he know what he was doing. Timing immaculate gets there ahead of Shane Daly, who looked like he might claim it. There for Luke McGrath to the air again. O'Brien under it once more, and it's picked up by Lencer. Away goes Ryan Baird. Oh, boy, does he have pace. Oh, boy, does he have pace. Ryan Baird in for Lencer. First try, second row shouldn't be able to do that, but he can. You took the words right in my mouth, that's not fair. Second rows are not meant to do that. Maybe get the ball, but <laughs> not many second rows in world rugby. You're going to get the ball where he gets it, take off round the fullback and finish the try. He is some athlete, some specimen, and that is some fit. Even a goose kick in there looked like to finish things. <laughs> I can't tear away then, just in case. I mean, it's very hard to add anything to that, Stephen. I mean, that is just, yes, it's pace, but it's it's pace from someone and a skill set from someone well, good to set up. that it's just a different breed of rugby player right now. They're looking at a potential yeah, knock check, on. Check, check. Potential knock on, yeah. I think Looks like it is. Yeah, I think it's going to count for nothing. Oh, he'll be disappointed. We believe that it was knocked back by Red, but you're going to show me something different, right? Yeah, it was firstly touched by Red, then knocked forward by Blue, picked okay. up by Blue and scored. Let's, let's put it on the screen, make the decision. It's touched first by Peter O'Mahony, is it? Yeah, I think it is, but it definitely comes off Tommy O'Brien. Yes, right hand. Yeah, it's marginal, but it looks like Peter O'Mahony knocks it back, but onto the hand of yeah, we'll confirm. Tommy O'Brien, who then knocks it forward. You see it there, brushes off his thumb, so smallest of margins is going to deny Ryan Baird of arguably the try of his career, but he's the kind of player and the kind ben, of athlete that will probably score more than... Just given the screen, you're going to have to confirm whether that goes forward off the blue hand or not. Yes, mate, it does. It definitely goes forward off the blue hand, so no try. No try. No try for Lencer. Ben Whitehouse, the television match official from Wales, and you can see what the home crowd think of that. And the away crowd have the flags flying. And Ryan Baird, well, has chalked off one of the great second row tries at this stadium, simple as. Yeah, definitely. And actually, just looking around in the Aviva Stadium here, I'm so surprised. Well, I shouldn't be surprised. The amount of monster fans in the stadium. It sort of looks like it's 50 50 from up here, but it's not just the pace of Ryan Baird to get that try, it's the anticipation of where the ball is going to go. He really he, he understands that Pete's going to try and knock it back. And he backs himself to make that decision, and then he goes after it. And when he goes after it, he executed it, only for it to be chalked off. But his athleticism is something else, something to behold from a second row here today. Bind! Set! At the feet of Coombs. Munster turned the screw. Oh, and that Leinster scrum, really good work from the Munster 18. 
They may have dodged a bullet, but they try and fire one of their own. Greg Casey almost threw, but he juggles with it, and back we go. I tell you what, that's the best three all okay. first 20 minutes of a match Check I've seen all season. As Van der Fleer does just about enough, but Ben Hilliard, you said it early, Steve, he's playing so flat to the ball, you know he's confident. He's got the ball, he's got options, he's showing and going, he's pumping the ball, making passes really late, the angle. which means there's almost no time for defences to recover. Very, very good sign if you're a Munsterman. If you're coming to the game late and you're wondering why Josh van der Fleer is out there, unfortunately, Will Connors took a really nasty blow to the head in the opening minute of the game, and he was replaced immediately by van der Fleer. And that's why the number 20 shirt is out there. After 20 minutes, he's been there for 19 of them. Here's a real chance for Munster inside the uh, Leinster 22. They're in prime position. The question is, have they got the accuracy and maybe the imagination from here to find a hole in this Leinster defence? Job one, secure possession. Dermot Barron. And Leicester get a man in the air. On, Chris. No, okay, but it's on. still there for Munster. They're going to have to abandon whatever was coming from the training ground and go back to playing heads up. Quick Leinster line speed knocks Munster back. Good hands though from Crowley and then Healy and then Shane Daly. Just edging into that 22 now. Carry from Jeremy Lockman. Ty Byrne it didn't quite hold on to it. it did knock it backwards rather than forwards but yeah. Munster forced back another eight or ten meters here's Frisch who really has grown into that Munster no, number 13 shirt through this no. season Coombs almost got it away to Lockman who ducks under the first tackle a couple of times Munster have been an inch from breaking through that Leinster defensive line Keith Earls has the door shut on him by Robbie Henshaw here's Crowley saw Daly coming back on the angle here's Crowley again advantage tapped him off the ball advantage being played to Munster Leinster in fringe it's a good passage of play for Munster they've had a couple in this first half and have come away with very little rewards. Is there something more? No advantage. We're going to get a penalty anyway. Time off. Let's get blood sorted on the winger. Number two tackle play off. He never had possession over. Tackle off the ball. It's full blooded, isn't it? Just a bit. <laughs> just, <laughs> is, it just time, a bit. is it times like this that you're quite happy with your decision? To, it's to pretty comfortable here. Stevie keeps groaning beside. He's got a bad knee, and I've got a bad back. But it's very attritional out there. I think both teams are really evenly matched. For all the Munster keeping the ball very well, Leinster look very organised without the ball. It's going through the season. Munster most carries in the league and the most rocks under two seconds. Sounds great. But second fewest line breaks in the league, CV. So very good at keeping the ball, guys. but maybe slightly predictable, maybe slightly blunt at times. And again, you're going to beat the top sides just by being blunt. But I think today, John, they're really close, yeah. really, really close to that final pass. Ben Healy getting half line back breaks. Craig Casey nearly getting away from Josh van der Fleer as this game wears on. If Munster can keep this up, those gaps will get slightly bigger. And I think Frank Murphy, all credit to him, he's keeping the game alive, he's keeping it going. Lots of physicality around the breakdown, he could penalise on numerous occasions, but extremely good as he gives a bit of a talking to, to Kelleher. Quite enjoying the uh, Ben Healy-Jack Crowley combo as well. We wondered the impact that would have, because Jack Crowley's been so good at 10, but... It's given them that extra playmaker in that role, allowing them to bring a bit more width and well, she sacrificed touch and maybe a little bit of physicality. Jack Crowley definitely more than capable of holding his own in the physical encounters. 
this year. It's just that, you know, out of the Glasgow game, it was really interesting. Fekatoa, he doesn't pass the ball that much. He's very one-dimensional. He's very good at what he does. But it just creates that little more indecision in defence. If you've got somebody that can just leave that late pass, zip one across a couple of attackers, and he's playing out of his skin alongside this man on the ball now. Yeah, Crowley not afraid of the dirty work, that's for sure. Here's Ben Healy with an opportunity to give Munster the lead. And up go the flags, and they do lead it. It's the slenderest of margins. But Munster lead at the Aviva Stadium. Leinster three, Munster six. Harry Byrne. Swings the boot at it, and a really good restart in terms of giving his teammates time to get there, but Burn soars into the air with a little help from his friends and claims possession. Lockman's been in that position a lot in the opening 25 minutes, that first receiver position to eke out a better angle for what is likely to be a clearing kick from Healy. Ryan Baird almost got there. Harry Byrne kicked downfield. A little bit of backspin on it. Might have felt it was going to go too long, but well, that's a terrific follow up. And it's a mistake from Healy not dealing with that, but he's got away with it for the moment at least. Tommy O'Brien. Well, Mahoney holds on to him. Harry Byrne wrapped up by Coombs, big number eight. Terrific line speed to get there, as there is from Jan Klein to stop Robbie Henshaw going anywhere. Milne, Leinster, numbers out there, shift the ball quickly to Natai, who brings them up towards the 22. Jenkins backs into the tackle, presents the ball for McGrath again. Harry Byrne, van der Fleer inside him, he's chopped down. Good tackle from Stephen Archer. <laughs> Big hits again. Al Alatoa on the receiving end. Ryan Baird can't break away. Munster fly hack it through. It's not advantage. The advantage wasn't there, so it'll be a scrum Munster ball. The best defence in the league had to go to work again, and it did its job. I'm absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving this. Edge of the seat stuff, Monster just tackle after tackle, back off the ground, work hard in the defensive line, Play communication ball. with the guys inside and out, and both wingers, Shane Dilly and Keith Earls, even though they're short, they're making brilliant defensive reads to come in and stop whatever Leinster are throwing at them. And just the Leinster players now in a huddle, the forward pack, giving themselves a talking to. This could have been one of those that he looked back on with deep regret. But he had a little help from his friend, and Mike Haley got Ben Healy out of a whole heap of trouble. Again, you can tell he's confident, though. Even in that situation, that is alarm bells going on. That is as uncomfortable as you can be on a rugby pitch. And he flicks the ball over his shoulder, unsighted to his teammate. It's very Scottish, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment Don't or not, Stevie. Probably not. Bind! Early. Free kick monster. I guess you go back now. Michael Milne, the one who's yes. penalised. Or singled out, shall we say. This is an area of the game that Monster are just starting to get the upper hand. They won a penalty off the last scrum, or penalty and advantage. No and I just fancy their chance of Stephen Archer, been around a long time. You say, Riles, he, is today equal Donico Callahan's appearance for Monster? Would that yeah. be right? He's right up there, he's around a long time, as you say. He had a couple of international caps back Gross. in 2013. 262nd Bye. Munster cap today, 14 wow. seasons with them. Set. And I've been some questions about, Steady. was he still at it, was he still able? Well, that Munster scrum in the first 27 minutes would suggest most definitely he is. Here's Keith Earls. 
little dink over the top. Jimmy O'Brien, excellent positioning for a fellow who doesn't play fullback every day of the week. Healy again holding on to it. O'Brien the first to get there. Haley with Jimmy O'Brien out of position. That's a really good kick and it bounces up kindly for Luke McGrath. That could have gone anywhere. He fly hacks it downfield. There's a Lencer player over on the far side out of the game. So it's 15 against 14. That's a hat trick for Healy of getting caught in possession when the pass should have come first to Omani. Lovely hands to Stephen Archer. Casey. Crowley, Munster cranking through the gears, Frisch, and then Hodnett, that red oh. scrum cap, looking to strip the defence out wide. Oh, what Good kick. hands, Ty Byrne from Greg Casey. Ben Healy, is this the moment for Munster? Almost to the half hour mark, they groan into this game. And they continue to knock at the door. Can they find a way in? Advantage to Munster. Munster on advantage. Wide out on that far wing. Shane Daly screaming for a crossfield kick. Although Tommy O'Brien has got himself over there now. Here's Barron. Back on the narrower of the two sides. Crowley. Keith Earls, not an awful lot of space to operate in, and Earls almost got it away. Nine, Orsi making a tackle. Penalty to Munster, McGrath with the tackle, off the ball. But hey, talk about terrific passing and loads of endeavour from Munster, and Leinster just sticking at it defensively. Great passage of play from both sides. Really good. Bit of a knock on, but the penalty's coming. So in interesting here what they're going to do. Well, backwards, he makes a tackle on the ground. Right. That's the penalty there. Luke McGrath. It's a good spot by Frank Murphy, actually, because Luke McGrath doesn't do that. I think Munster may be in there. I think that's a massive opportunity for them. Well, they're going for it. Big decision. Really, really big decision. Munster certainly on top this last six or seven minutes. Right then. Discipline, please. 30 minutes on the clock. Six points to three in Munster's favour. Can they sow a seed of doubt? Close again and you will be free kicked. Move off, you're not on the line, you're off the line. Outstanding season from Leinster. Played 18, won 16, drawn one, lost one. They're into the final of the Champions Cup. They've come into this one with everybody expecting them to see Munster off. But you do that at your peril. Believe that Munster aren't going to show up or aren't going to be able for you. You do it at your peril. Leinster survived that particular moment. Downfield from Carney. The crowd here are loving this. O'Brien catches Healy in possession. And Leinster come pouring in. Munster get the penalty. Huge credit has to go to Max Deegan. He was right in the middle of that mall, scrambling his way through. And Jenkins as well. And the ball spills out. What an opportunity he lost. I think when the backs actually joined there was a little bit of confusion but Ben Healy's down he's, he's had to do some tracking back oh. well, thanks, I, said. <laughs> I think it's more to catch a breather Ralph. Well. <laughs> yeah, well 26,795 souls in the Aviva Stadium Plus all of us, Personal paying race, customers, us floor, so. not us, yeah. and they have been royally entertained, haven't they? You've got to say absolutely at this point, 6-3 maybe doesn't reflect the quality in terms of on the scoreboard, but my word, the blood there, then. when you show up to a semi-final and knockout game of rugby, you want to see rugby of this quality, of this intensity more than anything, both teams going hammer and tongue. 
neither able to really unlock the other, but half chances, plenty of endeavour. Rory Scannell is going to come in because Ben Healy is going to have to go and have that blood stopped and maybe a question of a HIA in there as well with the head injury. We'll try and clarify that for you in the next couple of moments. I'm always intrigued about what it's like to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a derby match with guys who are in international squads with you, who you've roomed with, who you're friends with in many ways. I, it, 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 it's an intriguing thought of what that must be like, Johnny. You've done it, Stephen. What's, what's a day like today like? It's always, they were always the most fun games. They were, and I always compare it to playing with your back brother in the oh, yeah. garden. I had one brother, and I never went harder than against my own brother. So I think it's the same. You know the guys well. You know their habits. You know what they're good at. You know what they're bad at. You know what they don't like. And that's what makes it so fierce. Spoken like a true brother. <laughs> Wait. Hodden it. Tackle! Casey and Klein. Casey once more. Leinster didn't commit too many to that breakdown as Rory Scannell is welcomed to the game by a thumping tackle from Jack Conan. No. It's been defences on top in the opening 32 minutes. Both sides have found ways into the 22 neither side has been able to find a way over the try line is there anything before the break from either of the monster again with the opportunity inside the 22 Haley that's good hands and as I say that McGrath got his body in the way and was it knocked forward intentionally so we just got forward so far Andrew Brace on this near side. You take it's it in the tackle? He's going for the tackle, but the arm's out. Can I just put it up and make sure? Oh, oh no, 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 no. He knows what he's okay. at. I'm going to suggest that all 19 international caps and 12 or 13 professional seasons of Luke McGrath's experience. It's your best angle, Frank. This is going to be a, a card, isn't it? Has yeah, to be a yellow just card. A angle. I'm on penalty at the moment. I don't see anything else. On the 22, and there's plenty of cover. We're in agreement. In agreement. Yeah, I'll put the wide angle up now, Frank. Yeah, it's probably it's probably a bit too wide, I think, Andy, to be uh, in the tackle. Maybe we're being a little harsh because yeah. of the slow motion, but. That's intentional for me. Intentional I'm penalty. Just cover there, Frank. Yeah, okay. the, uh, just a, penalty. a yellow card, surely. Just a, knock on. just a penalty. Don't go. I'm just going to get the penalty. <laughs> yeah. I'll just give you the mark. Ready, guys? Right then. Crowley will go to the corner. Still no sign of the return of Ben Healy. Which means Crowley, of course, moves into 10 and Scannell into the midfield alongside Frisch. They've been here a few times in this first half as we tick towards the half time break. Munster haven't been able to find a way through as of yet. Coombs and Co. look to right that wrong. Tig burn and it's ripped away. Again by the Leinster defence. At least three times we've seen it in that position. And then Conan with the carry all the way to the 22. Harry Burns ships it on to Ala Alatoa. No such thing as a straightforward easy exit yet. Now it's completed. And Crowley's across. This young man has been very impressive on a big, big occasion. Casey, Coombs, Kelleher up to make the tackle. And Munster will build all over again. Scannell to Lockman. Robbie Henshaw. Tackle! Tackle, says the referee. Leinster were looking for a mole to be called. Keith Earls.
knocked forward. Thought the referee was going to talk to somebody there. Cardine, please, not you, Captain. Just he is Captain. going to talk to somebody. It's Robbie Henshaw. Hi, George. Welcome to Captain Lamar. Speaking to me like that again. Yeah, Robbie Henshaw screaming at the referee to encourage him to call a mall, no. shall we say. And he was clear in his decision that it was a tackle. Okay. Mistake by Keith Earls. The word mistake is not something we've used. It's such a rarity in this I game. Tell which I mean, went first. there have been so few mistakes. Yes, the defences have been on top inside the 22s, but the quality of what both teams have thrown at each other, particularly Munster at Leinster in this first half, has been really enjoyable to watch I'm not sure if we'll get a replay of it or not but Keith Earls actually just looks up at the Leinster defence and then a split second later the ball is passed to him and it's, as soon as he turns round the ball is there just came half a second too early for him not taking the weight Munster who have been in the ascendancy in the scrum are penalised on this occasion, and Leinster get that penalty, and that will be yeah. a significant relief. <laughs> Taken well by Haley. I'm just having a looking down at the possession stats of this first half. It feels Use like it. Munster have had the ball more than the 57% we're seeing in front of us. But the stats don't lie. Backwards off blue. There's a song in there. Ducked into it, play on. <laughs> Munster defend now. Here's Harry Byrne and Natai and good hands from Leinster and good hands create space. McGrath to Carney van der Fleer goes around to offer the option. Keith Earls watches his man all the way back inside. All the experience of Carney and Earls in opposition there. Jenkins. As Leinster go into the Munster 22, it's been a while since they were here. Jimmy O'Brien, Natai, what a tackle, what a tackle from Shane Daly. No contest, leave it now. McGrath, Milne. McGrath again, narrow side once more, Harry Byrne attacks the line and... A little soft offload doesn't find hands. Have Munster turned this one over? No, they haven't. It's there for McGrath, just a little slow to get to his feet. Josh van der Flair. Munster's defensive line set again. That's really well worked by Henshaw. Jenkins, Jenkins, second row. One disallowed for Ryan Byrne. That one is likely to count for Jenkins. And Leinster, well, we talk about the championship moments. As you head towards a break, you want to lay down a marker, and Leinster have done just that. Leinster take a bow. Munster have had all the ball, it feels like, all the pressure. Yet time and time again, Leinster found What's an that? answer to what Munster threw them, and they go up the pitch. A few phases later, it just shows you, it's not about how much ball you have, it's about what you do with that ball. Giving the players the quiet. It's a great finish. Still has some work to do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, unbelievable. There's a reason why Leinster are where they are. You're right, let's and they're so We're consistent with how they play. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And Jenkins as well. Everybody thinks he should be starting alongside James Ryan. Maloney obviously has something to say about that, but he's been brilliant. Caught tag burn, just ball watching a little bit in defence. And what a support line. What an offload as well by Henshaw. And over goes the conversion. And Leinster lead it by 10 points to six. You, you look at that from Jenkins, and it's real proof now that it doesn't matter whether you've got four, five, six, two, one, or three on your back. You've got to be able to play ball if you're going to live at the top level now. I think it, more than anything, though, it shows the value of the offload. And we speak about it all the time and why are they so important. Look at the last 10 times months have had the ball and how many positive offloads going forward. You get one positive offload where Henshaw gets through, frees his arm, and you're in behind the defence with big men running at small men. So powerful.
Tommy O'Brien. Did he knock it forward? No, says the referee. It went backwards. Then Jack Conan, that's the second or third carry from deep inside his own territory, right out to the 22 and beyond in this first half. And Luke McGrath has a little look at the clock and a word with the referee who says that's that. Jason Jenkins' try is the only one of the half, but it's been a half that has been so engaging and so enjoyable. It could go either way still. You know that. You don't want to miss the second half. The mist around the Aviva. But it's been crystal clear and classic inside. Leinster 10, Munster 6. URC Grand Final, live May 27th on Viaplay Sports 1. What a thrill to feel alive, excitement's in the air. Seems like there's a rainbow smiling. Whatever the day throws at you, the sun is our compact right SUV sky. is ready. As Toyota Yaris Cross, self-charging hybrid. mortgages than any other UK lender. Helping people buy the place they call home. Halifax, it's a people thing. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Law Barista Sublime, a new compact coffee machine, a world of exceptional coffee creations. Law Barista, infinite creations, infinite pleasure. Smash life with Set for Life from the National Lottery. Win £10,000 every month for 30 years. Play on app. Set for Life from the National Lottery. Fast delivery. Thrilling entertainment. Join Prime for £8.99 a month. The gravel axe, please. The UK's fastest 5G network. Three. I'm sorry, but the person you've called is not available. Please leave your message after the tone. this June on Viaplay. After 
season. Welcome back. If you're just joining us on the semi-final day in the URC, the Stormers, the defending champions, are through. They beat Connacht 43-25 in Cape Town earlier today. A bit of a flattering scoreline. Connacht put up a heck of a fight. And that reaction from John Dobson says it all. And we have an absolute firecracker on our hands here at the Aviva. A ferocious no holds barred Irish Interpro derby and it's great watching it with these two because those old loyalties remain blue red uh, the two of you have been on the edge of your seats and this has been some contest so yeah, far Rob. that was a superb 40 minutes uh, of rugby we knew Munster were going to come out really strong fire everything at Leinster and they have done they've played really good attacking rugby they've taken the ball flat to the line they're going for the corner they know they need to score tries ladies and and they've had three cracking opportunities, and, and they've blown them. And Peter O'Mahony, before the game, said, we need to have our best performance of the season. We need to take opportunities when they come, and they didn't. And Leinster, as clinical as a team as we've seen from them throughout the past season, throughout the number of years, they go back up the other end, they get their first opportunity to score a try, and they take it, and they lead 10 points to six. There is a parallel with the first semi-final, David, because that was kind of like the Stormers. Connacht dominated territory and possession, but when the Stormers got an opportunity, they just flooded the channels and they usually scored. And like Rob said, Leinster have had precious few opportunities, but they made it count. They made it count, and in fairness to Leinster, they found a way to, you know, to turn that ball over. When Munster had the ball, three great opportunities, nearly over the line three times, and they, they, uh, Leinster found a way to just rip the ball off. And you know, Munster just need to be a little bit more clinical in those areas. But, you know, we always feared that Leinster are a team, they'd get half a sniff and they can break it down. They play that ball so flat on the line and, and you know, it's, it's those championship minutes just before, you know, half time when teams are a little bit tired, they're just catching a, you know, a defender who's clocked off for a second and they'll, they'll rip you apart and that's, that's why Leinster is so good, so I, clinically. I don't think we talked about Robbie Henshaw's offload enough. I mean, Jenkins scores that try, but it's an incredible offload. Two people on him, and he managed to get the ball free. I thought Munster might have learned the lessons from last week, because that's exactly what Glasgow tried to do to Munster. Every penalty they got, they went for touch. And when the points are on the board, it's knockout rugby. I think you've got to take them. And there were three key instances there from Leinster where they steal, they steal the ball. And then, like Rob said, one opportunity... It's yeah. good. It's clearly preordained, isn't it, David? Because, as you say, twice they had a kickable penalty here, twice they went to the corner, and twice Leinster robbed them of the ball. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's why Leinster are so good. You know, we, you think that ball is secure in, in the mall, but, you know, just someone managed to come out. And, and that's fight. That's not just... I don't think it's Munster being sloppy. I think it's, it's Leinster knowing how to turn that ball over. Um, and here again, you know, just some unbelievably fantastic play from Munster. And they've held the ball on for long, long periods and played some great play. But when it matters, those last few metres, the composure to be able to you know, just get that ball over the line and protect that ball has just has been missing. And, and Leinster, you know, Conan has been, he's been excellent. He, you know, he's carried so well all day. But I think it's, it's Ronan Kelleher there who actually got in there and, and did the damage. But Leinster just seemed to find a way. They could live to regret those, couldn't they? They could live to regret those first opportunities. Absolutely, absolutely. You don't get that many chances against Leinster. So, look, they're still in the game. You know, it's only a four-point game now. And, and uh, you know, I think that they will come out in the second half and they will, again, continue to try. And it's been the story. We spoke about the stats, you know, all season for Munster. They, they hold on to the ball. They have a lot of rock time, a lot of quick work ball, yeah. a lot of really good positive things. But when it comes to scoring the tries, they're not as clinically efficient as Leinster are. I think Ben Healy's key. He's gone off with, with an HIA and he's been playing really Really flat. It's been really good. But I think that combinations work really well at 10 and 12. And if he doesn't come back on, that's a massive loss to Leinster because they play some really good phase play. They got themselves in the right position. Be it some good defence from Leinster, but he has been key to their attack. Leinster a little bit rattled in there, you know, because. I'm not sure they were expecting this sort of monster to come at them. They haven't been used to it all year. They've turned monster over so many times. Now, I know it is a semi-final, but Leinster just look a little bit off the pace. Their line speed is not as quick as we expect from, from the normal. Uh, they're not going at the ruck overly hard. Um, so Stuart Lancaster and Leo Cullen are going to properly get into them now at half time because there's another half opportunity. Munster are creating some really good stuff and they just need to land one or two of them to turn this game back in its head again. The composure shown there when he was almost on his own line and getting knocked back in the tackle. It kind of
kind of vindicates, doesn't it, the selection policy? We heard Graham Roundtree at the, the top saying it's a really tough decision at the moment between his fly halves. Joey Carberry, we've seen him here with a vest on, he's not even in the 23. Ben Healy justifying the selection. Absolutely, he's been playing brilliantly of late, and we spoke about it, you know, the shackles are off and he's playing with a smile on his face. Um, but the way they, they've interplayed himself and Jack Crowley, and Jack has gone in out half a couple of times, and for that break that, that uh, Ben Healy got there, you know, they, he'd got, he stepped in there, and it was a lovely, well-worked play. We just needed somebody on the shoulder. We spoke about it, you know, with that half break, you know, who's the guy coming through on the support line to really make that, that incisive break, you know, make a half break into a full break, and, and have, have that, you know, I suppose the, the capitalising on those breaks and those, that, that good play, and just, just missing a little bit it's only half a fraction of just somebody getting on the shoulder expecting expecting Ben to make the break how gutted will Ryan Baird be that that try was chalked off he can't put on the show reel now so gutted like you know for for a back three player to do goose step is impressive for your second row to goose step the opposition fullback is incredible at the time I, I, I didn't think that Tommy O'Brien had knocked it on but look at that like his top speed is phenomenal uh, that is an incredible finish unfortunately for him it's not going to get chopped off uh, but the decision was right in the end Frank Murphy had to look at it a few times there was one sloop, super slow motion which you can clearly see O'Mahony knock it back and then off Tommy O'Brien's hand uh, it was a correct decision but absolutely gutting for Ryan Baird and somewhat gutting for a huge amount of the Leinster fans in here and just quickly Rob because the teams are back out behind us Will Connors went off after one minute, Josh van der Fleer straight on after his injury break. You think perhaps Munster got away with one there, it could have been more than a penalty. I just think that it warranted more of a discussion. At the end of the day, this is a swinging forearm to the face. OK, it might have been passive and it might not have been as aggressive as we would have seen, but it's still a shot to the head. And, you know, for me, there's impact there to the face and it has an effect on Will Connors before he hits the ground. Uh, the disappointing thing, component of it for me was that Frank Murphy didn't reference it too much. And I think, you know, if we're looking for consistency, he had a duty to, to properly explain his rationale. A card, in your opinion, a yellow card? I think probably a yellow card, yeah, I do. Yeah, and there was a couple more. Uh, I think Frank Murphy, listen, it was a strange decision for me at the start of the week to have him refereeing because he was going to lose either way. Um, but there's been a few decisions now where I think... He's, he's favoured the red team. But we cannot question the integrity of Frank Murphy, and I think we've got to go back now because the teams are back out so we can rejoin John Barkley, Stephen Ferris, and, of course, Ryan Nugent. Immaculate timing as we steady ourselves for what we hope will be a mirror image of the first half in this second 40 in terms of the intensity and performance from both sides before someone accuses me of suggesting the scoreline should be the same. Tackle. Ben Healy has not come back out for the start of this second half. The number 22 shirt of Rory Scannell is still there. We haven't had confirmation, but his lack of presence suggests the confirmation will be he's failed at HIA and will take no further part. Here's Mike Haley. And away goes Peter O'Mahony, looking for support. O'Mahony bursts into the Leinster 22. Crowley got the pass away somehow to Archer. Leinster go after that ball, and well... John Barkley and I were looking at the statistics at half-time, and he drew my attention to the handling errors too. Two errors on either side in 40 yeah, minutes of football. Minutes, please, like, that is a is rare error. Monster? Not that one, but the pass from Craig Casey. Terrific run from Peter O'Mahony. Yeah, it was. It was a first half of real quality, and sometimes the accuracy doesn't match it. It can't keep up. But even the break by Peter O'Mahony there. He sees Casey on the inside, but... Ruin held us just about enough to stop that pass going. It's another crunching tackle on the game line. Stay back, look. Hymos is there. Back. You know, we go to these games week in, week out. It's easily, when you watch them on television, it's easy to sanitise the physical crunch that those tackles make. Oh. And it's, well, it's had no effect on the performance of the players because Coombs is the latest to go surging through. Tyke Byrne. 
ball doesn't go to hand, but Frisch That's picks it up really well, and out it goes to Keith Earls, and Earls oh. bounces inside one, and then another, and suggestions of a high tackle will tackle continue here. to follow play. Mike Haley sets it up, and now it's Lockman who charges into the Leinster defence. Munster clearly feel they need to score next. They need to set down a marker in this second half. O'Mahony, as he so often does, is the leader. It's there once more for Archer. Leinster set their defensive line and put him to ground, and as so often as we've seen in this game, when Munster get ahead of steam up and look to threaten that Leinster line, they increase the defensive effort and they find a way to stop them. I thought it was going to be a drop-off in the second half, but there hasn't been. Brilliant play by Munster. Seen a break right up the middle of the pitch by Stephen Archer and then an offload. Peter O'Mahony heavily involved in everything positive that Munster are doing. Just looking across, Stephen, at Leinster over on that far side of two players down and there are one, two, three Munster players taking a knee and Jack Conan, one of those. Mike Haley is taking a drink of water. It's Antoine Frisch that's space. over on space, this space, side. That's Dave Carney and Jan so Klein. It, space on the scrum. It's a bit like the A&E down in Vincent's <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> She's about 100 look, yards away from here. I've been there too many space. times, Ralph. But yeah, very attritional match. I know it's low scoring, but space. the impact, as you space rightly space said, well, Keith Earls over on the far side of the pitch. As soon as he gets to the touchline, he hammers off that right foot, puts the head down. Going for the line, and he's stopped in his tracks by the Leinster defence. As we just see the little knock on by Stephen Archer. See Kieran Frawley in there for Leinster. Quite sure who's gone. See Natai and Henshaw. Harry Byrne is there. Really? Is it Jimmy O'Brien, maybe? Up, lad, it, eh? Dave Carney, as you can see. Carney looks okay to continue for the moment, at least. Reese Ruddock, James Ryan, Abaladze as well look on from the Leinster corporate we box. Okay, I've asked for space, but we're both on penalty now for its stability. Okay, we don't get Can we get conf penalty. confirmation, please, of who Frawley's has come on for? I think it's Jimmy O'Brien. Feeds the scrum. Use it. There for Harry Byrne. Wait, day six, eight, stop. Haley oh, scampers yes. across and does a good job of keeping his foot out of touch. Thought about the pass to Shane Daly, and the ball was just there for a moment for Leinster to poach. Munster secure it. Crowley. Nice hand, scandal, and then. It's Daly again and back inside to Scannell and Keller across to make the tackle. Munster coming again, wave after wave of Munster attack. It's somehow Leinster just get a defensive body there when they need to. No, no hands, rocks for him. Pace and intensity of this game just has not dropped in the opening four minutes of this second half. Frisch, O'Brien gets a hand up there. Earls gets a hold of the ball, but it just took the momentum out of the attack for a moment. Lockman again, building, building, building. They need to finish, Klein, held on by Jenkins. Burn, it's all a little narrow, they need to go wide. Lencer were sucked in for a moment, they're not now. Crowd urging their side on, it's the Munster voices that you hear now. Hodnett, nowhere to go. Two blue shirts in front of him, one of them Ryan Baird. Stay in the high most. Use it. And the tempo just comes out of the attack for a moment. Byrne flicks it on. O'Mahony 
drives those legs three metres short. Coons. Advantage, 22 blue offside. Advantage to Munster as Leinster stripped the ball again. It's almost 22. like Leinster have taken the fact that Munster come into this game with the best defence personally. <laughs> they want to be the best at everything. You've seen it a few times, close to the line, I'm off. the ball getting stripped out. It's Charlie Natai there who managed to do it, but it does feel, Stevie, at some point, Munster are going to have to convert all I'm this off, pressure, all this territory, all this possession into something more. Because we know and we think, well, we think we know that Leinster will score again. They have to, absolutely have to. I'm, I'm loving the duels. Oh, Jack Conan versus Coombs. How many times have they smashed each other in this game? And Jack Conan is right up for it. Well, Jan Klein is going to have to go. He received a bit of attention five or six minutes ago, maybe less. And they've given him a couple of minutes, but he's not able to continue. In in his place comes one of the Witcherly boys, spinning Witcherly. Guys into that Henry, second row decision, his brother Josh also on the bench for front row cover Captain, you ready? Klein has <laughs> really Outside. put it in Munster go with a tap and go and they go route one no subtlety about that one head down drive for the line Tyke Byrne pops it off. Munster have it again. Let's her offside again. It's another free play for Munster. Byrne picks and goes. The blue scrum cap hits the blue shirts. And he hits the deck. Surely he grounded it. He did ground it. If at first you don't succeed, just keep keep at it. That's the motto. And Tyburn and Munster have eventually got the reward. And deserved. We said just there, uh, we felt like they need to convert. They need to get some more points. In the world. They need a reward for all this pressure. Very next player, they take the tap out and they back themselves. They look after ball. Some of the contact skills, retaining that ball, the work from ruck to ruck made that team and the coaching staff very happy. See them welding in the archer. Dermot Barron, I think it's Tyke Byrne that comes away with the ball. Big celebrations, big try. But I love that, John. I really love it. They didn't kick to the corner the first half. The mold didn't work for them. They tried something different. They went to the Leinster play of the five-meter pick and go, and they got the rewards. Brilliant from Monster. We have a game on our hands, Ryle. Oh, I think we've had a game on our hands from the opening minutes, Steve. It's just hugely entertaining stuff. Here's a fellow who knows a thing or two about being in red. The Rock Inspector, Donoghue Callaghan. Keen Healy's into the action. Not bad being able to call on four European, seven URC, 260. Three Leinster and 123 Ireland international caps when you need somebody for your second half effort. Advantage we played to Leinster, who looked to strike straight back. Legal in the counter rock, nine picked the ball in one side. That's the nuts and bolts of the game, isn't it? As you just need to keep it tidy. That's it. Craig Casey, Legal brilliant kind of rock by Josh van der Fleer. And he just please. harries, harasses him, doesn't he? And makes the mistake, forces him and into making the mistake. Sorry, Steve, you are so good about that. It's not just the action, but he knows he's in the middle of something. He still has the mindset and the awareness to have a quick look to Frank Murphy, catch his eye and say, am I OK to carry on? He didn't say anything, because he knows there, just to give away a stupid penalty is a get-out-of-jail free card from Munster. Crouch! Luke McGrath and the Leinster scrum he goes down with the referee, says on we'll go. That is a massive effort from Harry Byrne to find Tommy O'Brien. Mike Haley watched it all the way. It was, that must have been Last full down. on 30 yards to try and cover with a pass from Harry Byrne. Taking the momentum out of the Leinster attack for the moment. Here's Deegan to 
set them on the way again. McGrath, Harry Byrne, lovely hands to Ala Alatoa. No, pull away. When Leinster start going through the phases in this part of the pitch, you worry for the opposition. Here's Harry Byrne, Tommy O'Brien back inside. Robbie Henshaw, six, seven metres away That's now, Leinster. McGrath looking for a short side, is probed again. Henshaw, saw a gap, door shut by Byrne, but on we go. Skill set on show from all these players, right out of the top drawer. Munster set their task on defending and push Lencer back five metres. Only 27,000 people here. Feels like there's 50, if not more. Red and blue on their feet, throwing everything they can behind their teams. This is about as slow rock ball as Lencer have had all day. Shipped on from Van der Flair. Set up again. Pick and go from Jenkins, and that door is firmly shut. McGrath. O'Brien, lots of Munster defenders in tight. Can Leicester find a way out wide? They still go around the side. They're a metre short now. Ominous times and moments for Munster. But they've got themselves in there. They have done to Leicester what was done to them. They've bided their time. They've found their moment. They've stolen the ball. And Casey fires it downfield. Oh, what a game. I think that kick should have gone off. Frawley, it's frantic, it's frenetic, it's insane and it's wonderful to watch. <laughs> Harry Byrne oh, tries God. a worldie, Coombs kicks it downfield. And Munster go tearing after it, Charlie Natai is the one who's going to go back for Leinster, but he's got to be quick because Barron is there. Natai, you know, he represented New Zealand at the Youth Olympics in 2007 and he needed that pace right there. That ball's been alive for about what seems like about 15 minutes. Munster get out of jail. A great turnover by Tigburn. Decision making, plucks the ball up. You see the blue scrum hat. How many times have we seen that? But then the quality from Charlie Nagatai under pressure to send a 50 meter spiral. This game's got it all. You just have blood. Are you okay? Stephen Archer's last act as well. He was the one that anticipated the ball. And went full force, full throttle into that breakdown on his own line. And then Tagburn went in for this deal. I'm, I'm giggling to myself because I heard Frank Murphy say on his microphone, we've got blood. And I think it would probably be easier to find someone who doesn't have blood than someone who does. Well, Frank Murphy's looking good. He's the only man that I know that wears more fake tan than Tom Shanklin. <laughs> yeah, okay. Roman Salano is into the game, Peter O'Mahony is on, out go. of the game and it looks like Niall Scannell is going to come on for Barron who was receiving attention over towards the touchline over in the Leinster 22. He is not going to be able to continue so Niall Scannell comes in in his place. It does say a lot about the game. That in amongst all the madness, Frank Murphy's the only one that's realised that we need a hooker to start a line out for the game. Okay, push off, push off. I won't ask you again, lads. <laughs> Into the game also is Josh Witcherly wearing 17. It's Jack O'Donoghue who's into the back row for Munster. Hodnett has been there all the way. Lovely hands. There's belief in this Munster attack, isn't there? Haley. Not held. Oh, oh, what a tackle from Natai and Haley, who turned around and just got hit by a bus. And Van der Fleer picks. Frank Murphy no, fell over it. in the middle of all that as Munster players were scrambling to get back. Natai, that was a flat pass to tackle Deegan as Josh Witcherly no, came no, thundering no, up to make the tackle. The ball is out. And the quickest to react is Harry Byrne. And it's out again. And the quickest to react <laughs> is a Leinster player off their feet and therefore the penalty to Munster. You fill for a minute, will you? <laughs> it's, just, it's just madness. It's a mad game. 
People are flying in from all angles. Counter rocks. Tyburn. Counter rocks one time, doesn't get it. Counter rocks again, the ball pops out. The ball. You see what it means. You see, they can sense. We sense pre game, maybe there was an opportunity for Munster. Maybe there was an opportunity that they could turn over Leinster, given the team that maybe Leinster haven't put out. But they're definitely in this game. 52 minutes and they're more than in the game. The three points up, dominating the game, arguably. Let's on the line. And it feels like a particularly big day like for that this. fella, doesn't it, Stephen? Yeah, it sure does. Responsibility now on his shoulders. Oh, I didn't see one. Before. Coming into the last quarter of the game, he's got to direct his team around the pitch, make the right plays at the right times. But he's done it so far. 20 times capped Niall Scannell in to the hooker position for Munster Hodness is the one to receive. Casey has been a real live wire, kept that Leinster back row really guessing all the way through this game so far. But Leinster again alive to it defensively. It's a tackle, got to be released. O'Donoghue pirouettes out, turns around, goes route one, and then fights three, four Leinster defenders for every yard that he can make. No Witcherly. No Casey goes fishing, eventually finds the ball. Lovely pass, really lovely to Scannell. He's played very well since he came in from Healy at uh, the end of that first half. Casey. Oh, Donahue. Casey again. Mike Haley. Henshaw thunders into his ribcage. Finney and Witcherly. You'll be able to tell those that were here tomorrow they'll have no voice. Tackle! Stay here. Casey. And we're back in that position again where Munster have been so often in this game. Banging away at that Leinster defence on one occasion. They've been able to find a way through. They're looking for another. They have advantage. O'Donoghue Number four. sets it up. Crowley thought about the kick. Thought better of us. It's just relentless. Attack, carry after carry. And they're the sucking the life out of this ultra-fit Leinster defence. And they're holding on and they're probing. And then they find their moment. And they're now two metres short. Casey pops back inside the pass, the still, still the there, advantage still being played for the penalty, says Frank Murphy and Munster might need it, they've been forced back, what, eight or nine metres. Van der Fleer goes after it, Casey got isolated and that was legal, so we'll go back for the original infringement, which feels like it was about nine minutes ago. What a passage to play, yet again, how many times are we saying that? But it's really cute for Munster because the penalty advantage to keep on going, no passing it back to Crowley, kick the ball away aimlessly, look for a 50-50, just hold on to it. But John, you've got to be so impressed with the ball retention and the skill set from Munster here today. It's the, it's the options. I think they look so good when they've got that late pass, the hidden runner. You know, we know, we know Leinster are going to be good in dominant conditions, front on, head on collisions, but Munster looks so good when they shifted that bit wider. Guys. You guys know better than I do, but that no feels no like an odd decision. Three points on offer in a game this tight, when you're leading and you go to the corner. Your thoughts? Well, Peter Oman, he's off the pitch, isn't he? So I'm assuming from last week that it's Tagburn who's captain here. So he's the one that's made the decision. And it's scrappy ball, but from Munster's perspective, at least it's still their ball. But they're gone all the way, almost back to the 22, as Salanoa, who of course started his career with Leinster, carries for Munster. Jack O'Donoghue. Scannell doesn't quite find his man, but he does find a red shirt, gets it back himself. Natai, who's been so good for Leinster over the last couple of weeks out for a long spell with injury no Casey Frisch good handling again from Munster Crowley they may have retreated but they're still holding on to the ball use it 
Frisch. That's a big pass out from Shane Daly to Scannell. Bounces off the first tackle. Two Leinster defenders there to meet him. Haley somehow managed to get from one side of the pitch to the other to be the one who picked and went. Still Munster come. Ty Byrne almost slips away. Leinster hanging on to those tackles now. Here's Niall Scannell. Casey. Thought about one way, decided the other. Witcherly. Route one for him. Sets up Casey again. There's real belief in this monster side right now. O'Donoghue. Ty Byrne. That was isolated. Josh Witcherly. Kick and go from Hodnett. A meter short. They've been this close. They've been pushed back. They're this close again. Looking for the second try, Munster. We head towards the hour mark. Massive moment in this game. Salanoa. And Leinster, with inches, come away with the ball. Stay here. Oh, dear, oh, dear. If Munster somehow lose this game, they will go back to moments like that and curse their luck or their ability to seal the deal. I was just about to say, Ralph, well, that's a try of the season. I was nearly going to say it was a try of the season. Back and forth, back, back and over. forth. And the spilled ball from Salano up. But the spill ball from Salanoa, because of the continued intensity of the defence shot. They're not going away. They're not going away in the impact. The collisions are still there. There were some brilliant carries that gave Munster the momentum just to creep forward, creep forward. And they got to that all-important right on the try line. They've done the damage here. At this point, you know and you hope a simple carry. The easiest of the lot, and he manages some great impact in the tackle. We we'll see here, they're flying in there. Right on the ball, but if you're a Munster coach, you're a Munster player, Deegan did the damage there, but... Yeah, Deegan comes away with it, but it was the impact of the double tackle from Ryan Baird and Jason Jenkins, who... now... gone. Down from Casey... to Crowley. Casey again, Witcherly doesn't go to hand. Al Alatoa, Samoan international. Yeah, and a great fit for Leinster since he arrived. Oh, Derek Field, Tommy O'Brien. Has he got pace? So does Haley. Foot race. Who won it? I think Haley did. Goal line dropout, knock on. Goal line dropout for a knock on. Look how far O'Brien came back from. Look where Haley comes from. Oh. Oh, he had it as well. O'Brien had it. Let's go, let's go. Craig, Should playing. actually be a knock on. We're playing on, there's too many people down. Keeps happening, we're playing on. What a game. Jack. Hey, let's Shanks go. down pitch side. What are you making of all this? If Munster can keep hold of the ball at some stage. This lends to the defence will tire. They're getting off the ground slowly. And a lot of that is due to the intense carries back. Munster cannot make mistakes like that because you've just seen what it can do to a team. It is fast, it's frenetic out there. You can just feel the hits, you can hear it. God, it's hard to call this one. It sure is. It's an absolute belter. If you're, if you're a neutral, you have been royally entertained. If you're a Munster or Leinster supporter, you're going to be living on your nerves. Here's Harry Byrne and Tommy O'Brien. Into the final quarter we go. It's the sort of game you just don't want to end. Frawley from a beautifully created moment. Pick up from the substitute, Joe McCarthy, who came in for Jenkins at some point in the last couple of moments. Ala Alatoa caught behind the gain line. Great tackle from Niall Scannell. Frawley, Ryan Baird, who had an absolute worldly of a try disallowed in the first half. No, what a carry at this point in the game. Kelleher. Harry Byrne. Jack Conan. Salanoa tries to hold him up. Lencer go to ground. McCarthy. <laughs> absolute humping tackle from Jack O'Donoghue. Use it. Jack Conan. Ronan Kelleher. 
Leinster's fans are now on their feet. Al Alatoa carries in. It's they who go through the phases. It's Munster who are committed to every tackle. Just defending that five metre line as if it were the try line. McGrath, McCarthy. Stay no. Use it, Leinster. Leinster being told to use it. Gavin. Rare slow ball. Max Deegan steps over a body or two, picks the ball, and off he goes. Kean Healy. Different game now to when he started all those years ago. Al Alatoa. Pick and pop and Leinster throw the big bodies. Inches now short of the Munster line. McCarthy might fancy a goal himself here. Red wave in front of him, but he drives the legs and he drives Leinster over. Well, if there have been moments of the sublime, that was a moment of pure force from Leinster. Young Joe McCarthy, just 22 years of age, on his 19th appearance for Leinster, found the final inches. He sure did. A couple of inches to get across the line. And he uses his big frame, his power, and his leg drive, and also a couple of his Leinster teammates helping him get over the line. I just rewind the clock back five or six minutes. Munster turning down the opportunity for three points. They've done it all game. Came back to bite Glasgow last week. Will it come back to bite Munster this week? Leinster just looked that little bit more dangerous with ball in hand. And a valiant defence, but just not good enough on this occasion. Ronan Kelleher is uh, making his way over to the sideline here, which means John McKee will come in in the front row for Lancer Frawley with the conversion attempt, which is a snap hook to the left. And he leaves that one behind him. It's actually his first miss off the tee in the URC this season. Right then, where are we? Leinster lead it by two. And we have got 15 minutes left in what has been a truly enthralling URC semi-final. Remember, what lies in wait is a final against the Stormers. If Leinster win it, it'll be here in two weeks' time. If Munster win it, then everybody travels to South Africa for the final in a fortnight's time. In between that for Leinster, of course, there is a small matter of a Champions Cup final next weekend here against La Rochelle. Take him back. McGrath with the kick to the air. Haley gets there. Oh, that was a collision. Let's call it that. Dave Carney up to make the tackle. Here's Witcherly, Josh Witcherly, that is. And Lancer over the ball. And just in the last couple of minutes, those little battles, those little moments have gone blue. Yeah, they have. And actually, it's a brilliant carry, really strong carry. And the, the Munster players drive beyond. And there's just that small window for McCar McCarthy to come in. And there he is. Straight over the ball. I think that's what you call an impact sub. Trying a turnover in, what, five minutes on the pitch? For a big man, he gets very low as well there. Stevie, technically very good. Yeah, I, I had him, but he, did, he didn't affect. So then, throw to the line out for John McKee, former Ireland under 20, just 22 years of age. Campbell College captain who won't be happy with that particular effort. Wait. Line out. Lost. Dave Carney gathers. 
see some room out there. This one's going to be close to a 50-22, but Haley got there in the nick of time. Frawley gathers and sees space in front of him. Daly gets there, but Frawley gets to him. Oh, that's a fantastic offload when Munster really needed it, because Leinster were going to come pouring through again. Tommy O'Brien. Outside. Wait. Outside, says the referee of Jack Crowley's kick, oh, no. and it bounces up kindly for Luke McGrath, who says, follow that to Frawley. And he does, that and is. almost is able to pick it off, but it's knocked forward from a monster hand. Was it Coombs who lost it? The flight of the ball just lost by Gavin Coombs. It Blue came nine. off his fingers, goes forward. Blue nine. And into the game comes another replacement, this time for Leinster at scrum half. Nick McCarthy, Nick McCarthy in for Luke McGrath. Nick McCarthy, by the way, called up to the US squad this week to take part in their Multiple World injuries. Cup or no, they are at World Cup preparations, but they're building for the next World Cup preparations, which start now because it's gone so badly for them. But McCarthy, who was of the Munster Parish for a Back couple here. of seasons, was born in Michigan and has the opportunity to play for the US. There's a suggestion you might move fully there next season, along with Stay Dave Carney and Adam Byrne. We'll Let's see go. how that one progresses. Go, go. Go. Right now, his job is to try and navigate along with the other 14 in blue on the pitch for Leinster away into the final of the URC. It does feel like we're starting to see the effects of this fatigue and the pace that the first 67 minutes have been played out. Just a few more handling errors creeping in. Bit of ill discipline. Seen a lot of people stretching, cramp off. Long way to go, though. Sure is. Here's Frawley. Natai gets a hold of it. Frisch committed to the tackle. Nothing late about that. Haley does well to push away Frawley to start with. And then gets to the safety of numbers. We're back offside for offside against Leinster. How good has Haley been today at fullback for Munster? He has been kick. everywhere, cleaning up absolutely everything. There. Running the ball back, kicking the ball back, fending players off. That's the Mike Haley everybody knew Munster were getting. He came to Munster from Sale back in 2018 and made an international cap for Ireland reasonably quickly, but has been hampered by injury and never had that real run at it, but he's right at the top of his game today, no doubt about that. That's quality defence by Frisch. If anyone watching that, he moves off the pass, puts so much pressure and takes away all Charlie Natai's time so he has to make the kick on the hoof great piece of defense josh van der fleer leading the tackle count with 23 oh. and he's played a minute less than everybody else okay. Okay. Over. Good ball from Munster. Good step from Scannell. Here's Crowley. Keith Earls in off his wing and having sung the praises of Mike Haley, he spills one. And Van der Fleer is going pouring after this. Crowley better not hang around. And he lets him back to his feet, even with the fatigue. Van der Fleer knew he needed to let Crowley get back up. If he lands on him there, it's a penalty for Munster, and they get out of their own territory. Well, Munster were just a little bit lateral for me there. pre plan move off the scrum to go to width in the second phase, but you've got to do a bit more damage through the middle before you chuck the ball Trade wide and made the defence very easy for the Leinster backs and Henshaw and O'Brien. See here. Haley looks up, yeah, he should take it, but because they're so lateral, Henshaw can put more pressure on him, he knows his number's up. Yeah, I got that. 
Josh van der Fleer looks a little ginger out there in terms of his fitness. He's not moving as freely as he has been through the whole game. And there's no one left on the bench to replace him. Leinster go to the mall, McKee has it at the back. We're into the final 10 minutes of a pulsating battle at the Aviva. Lovely line from Robbie Henshaw off Harry Byrne. But the referee says forward, cold on this side, I think. Oh, yeah. Have to say, on first viewing, I didn't see it, but on second, definitely right to the end. I guess if there's anything surprising about that, it's taken 70 minutes for them to come together, but it's been so fast, they haven't probably That's been able to meet. Yeah, John Hodden it. The seven Let's go, for Monster. Again, how good has he been today? He's been absolutely everywhere. And even Let's through go. that line break, I know it was a forward pass. He was the one off the tail. He got over to make it. Well, it's just yes. been relentless, Ryle. Absolutely relentless from both sides. Clearly, red scrum caps give you superpowers. It's a bit late for both of you. <laughs> Lads, take the weight off. You're making it difficult for yourselves. Four teams. Let's go. Spoken like a man who's never played a minute in the front row in his life. I, I do know. <laughs> it is great. It's something about front row forwards when referees tell them what to do. They look at them going, you'll never know, son. You'll never know. I, I, I'll be honest, it's not, it doesn't feel like we've hung around scrums there and I no. got it admire Frank Murphy, he's kept the game moving, he's kept the contact moving, the ball and play time will have been huge in this game. Lencer have gone after Munster in this scrum. And referee is going to give Munster the ball again. It's the right decision, the scrum was never, the ball shouldn't have been put in, the scrum was never settled. And it does wheel round on Keane Healy in the loose head side. Not reward anyone when we're not stable at the start. Let's go. Just not stable enough. If you want to be rewarded, be stable from the outset. Ruby backs up my point about the stability of the, the scrum before the, the put in from Casey. New front rows, of course, from the ones that started. Uh, both sides of all three replaced, which is pretty much standard uh, for all teams at this point in the game. Again, Leinster go after it, but Munster aware of it and ship it on quickly now. A cross field kick in. Well, Keith Earls was just exposed there for Henshaw to do exactly what he did. Munster saying he was still in the air. Timing on that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, pretty perfect. Timing okay enough then? Not in the air. Check. Check. Ben Whitehouse, the television match official, confirming to Frank Murphy. Uh, Keith Earls wasn't in the air. The noise level in here. I'm loving it, Ryan Baird, Joe McCarthy off the bench before they packed down in the engine room of the scrum they're shouting over to the Lancer fans waving their arms up in the air needing more energy, more passion from their supporters to try and drive them home to get this victory we love to see it It's a two point game, remember as we head in towards the final six minutes and Leinster get the advantage of the scrum and Natai. McCarthy, little kick through from Harry Byrne. Mike Haley, Earls offered himself, will go back for the advantage that didn't accrue from the penalty at the scrum. And just on the scrum, you know, this was an area of Munster's game early on in the season that really cost him. A number of games that they played, they got dominated when it came to scrum time.
in the front row that's come off the bench. You want impact, Ralph. Well. Nick. John, but they're just not getting Trying it. Trying to stop holding people in. Yeah, a little like Clarkson. Healy, obviously extremely Trying experienced in there, knows what he's doing. They did a number on them. You felt it coming in the scrum before when Munster had the ball and Casey's diggling and scrambling, trying to get that ball out. So it feels like a really important penalty in the game. The context of the game, the way it's poised now, 75 minutes in, how much are Munster going to rue not actually converting some of those opportunities they had? McKee, Ryan Bairds. Leinster go to the mall. One stop. McCarthy has his hands on it, and off he'll go. Natai. Dave Carney in there. Joe McCarthy. After it went Coons. Just when they needed something special. Gavin Coons scoops it up with one of those big arms of his and Munster have it again and Crowley. Wait. Downfield it goes. Here's Crawley. Max Teagan. Jack who puts the tackle in. They're coming at pace and they're coming at angles, but Clarkson just couldn't hold on to it. Whoa. That was risky. Hobnitz ships it on. We're playing sevens rugby now, you know. Back it over. Hodden it again. This is all inside the Munster 22. Downfield it goes. Casey for Haley to chase. Back goes McCarthy, hoping it'll bobble into the 22. It doesn't, and he just about Ready gets the start. kick away. Where's this one off to? Here's yet. Crowley. Oh, no. Look at the clock. Inside four minutes. Oh. Another enormous collision. O'Donoghue, Frisch, Munster Not are going to get minutes. another bite of the cherry, are they? Lovely pass, Keith Earls. Coombs, O'Donoghue. Well, if Munster aren't going to do this, they're going to die with their boots on. Here's Hodness. That's the Leinster 22. McCarthy makes the tackle. It's been a special, special game. We're inside the final three minutes. And it's still in the balance. Leinster need to hold their discipline. Munster just need a penalty. And they're exactly where they want to be for the final two and a half minutes of this game. And Crowley's in the pocket already. They'll try and get the penalty rather than put it on Crowley surely to drop a goal under these circumstances. They've had a couple of tens over the years that in these moments have found a drop goal for a special moment on a special day. And you know what? They just found another one. He might have 12 on his back, but he sat in the pocket like a true 10 and like a true champion, and he just delivered. It's not done, but it's a heck of a moment. It's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. If that's going to be one of the final acts of the game... Oh, my goodness, John Barkley. What are we watching here this afternoon? What a game of rugby. Yeah, I just turned to Stevie there and said, I think this is the best game I've seen all year by some distance. And I dare say, if you're not playing anyone else than each other, it would probably be good enough to win the league today. I think the quality, the intensity, the relentless nature of this game has been something to behold. What's happened here? What's happened here? All in front Munster of the kicker. Are going to get it. With it 90 seconds left in front of the kicker. Scrum Munster. This front row need to get together. Hopefully they've got together since that last scrum to she scan on the middle. You've got to figure out a way to make this scrum work. Be very surprised if the ball's not in through channel one. Get the ball in, get the ball out. And try and survive a minute.
Gee, the lads in Cape Town run packing their bags just yet. <laughs> Stays like this. The final in a fortnight's time will be in Cape Town. It'll be the Stormers against Munster. But this game has been the way it has. You wouldn't be surprised if there's another chapter. Alex Kendallin is the one who carries off the back of that scrum and thunders into the Leinster defenders. And Munster get there in numbers. And Casey's barking out the orders, as you know he would be at this moment in time. 20 seconds left on the clock for Munster to manage. 20 seconds from a remarkable victory that will see them into the final of the URC in a season that started oh so badly. There were cries for the head of the coach. There were cries for the players to be replaced. And here they are. The clock goes red. They've done it. Munster have beaten Leinster at the Aviva Stadium. And that was a game for the ages. A special, special game. Both teams contributing so much and having suffered for so long at the hands of the men and women in blue, the men and women in red in the Aviva Stadium have a joy that they cannot have expected at three o'clock this afternoon. Oh, lost for words for once. But what a game of rugby, honestly. It's been a pleasure to stand up here and commentate on it and witness both sides going toe to toe, ding dong, back and forth, momentum swings. It's just one of the best games of rugby I've seen for a long, long time. Semi final disappointment for Leinster once more. Yeah, look, we.